gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We're currently cruising at 70 mile an hour with Tesla Autopilot engaged. We've got a good tailwind, so our ETA is slightly ahead of schedule at 11pm local time. Sit back, relax, enjoy the in-flight entertainment, and we'll let Tesla Autopilot do the rest. Good night. Nope, that is not what Tesla Autopilot is about. You've still got to pay attention to the road and there is no napping allowed. But don't worry, I wasn't driving anywhere. In this video, I will tell you what Tesla Autopilot is, how it works and how it's going to improve your driving experience. Did that work? Did I fool you with that? Just a yes or a no in the comments will do and I'll know what you mean. So Tesla Autopilot, what is it? What isn't it? how much does it cost, and what it's like to use in the real world. We'll be covering all of that in this video. So Tesla Autopilot, what is it? Well, it's a driver assist feature, and the key is assist. You're not meant to go to sleep with this, despite everyone doing it and then crashing and wondering why they've done that. But it will control your steering, your braking, and your accelerating. So you're probably asking what else is there for the driver to do? And I get your point. It uses the 360 degree view it gets from the eight cameras based around the car. It's 160 meter forward facing radar and 12 proximity sensors around the car to build a picture of all its surroundings. And if you want to see what this looks like, it's on the center console for you because it renders all the digital images that it can gather and puts them on the display. Over time, it's had more and more images added. So it's got stop signs added, traffic lights, cones, wheelie bins, you name it, it gets added. Recent leaks suggest we're getting emergency vehicles soon and Tesla are going to start differentiating their own cars. So you'll see a Model X versus a Model S and it will display differently on the display. It's designed for dual carriageways and motorways, but as you'll see in this video, I'm going to take it on single carriageways through a town center, along some country roads, and then on dual carriageways and motorways. So I bet you're wondering how much does this option cost because it is quite expensive. Well, if you've spent 40 grand on a Tesla Model 3, it comes as standard. In fact, it comes as standard on any Tesla that you buy. So Tesla Autopilot is a free option. It's not really an option. It's just free. It's standard. Without further ado, let me take you a walk through it. So I'll take you through some of the basics that you can see on the screen at the moment. You've got the top right hand corner, you've got the speed limit for the zone that you're in. Now that uses GPS data as opposed to reading road signs, so it's not the most reliable. In the center, you've got a gray circle with a number in it. That just means that traffic aware cruise control could be enabled. And if you did enable it, that's the speed that you'd be going. And then top left, you'll see there's a gray steering wheel that keeps flicking on and off. That tells you that you could engage Tesla Autopilot if you wanted to. Now it's all controlled through the right stick. So if I just tap down once on the right stick, that's the cruise control enabled. And then if I tap down twice on the right stick, that will enable auto steer. And you can see they've now turned blue and there's two blue lines. That says everything's engaged. The car's completely controlling its steering and speed and braking. So we've just got these roadworks coming out, which would be an interesting test for it. In theory, it's going to identify the cones, drive around it, and then slow to a stop because this car stopped at the traffic light. And you can see I didn't put any input to the steering wheel there whatsoever. And then the car's pulled up nice and gradually behind this uh, blue car in front. Car in front starting to accelerate away, so our car should start to pull away, and it has. I always find with Tesla Autopilot it's a little bit slow to pull away from junctions. It's, it's a little bit too hesitant for my liking. But really good example there on the screen of all the visualizations of all the cones that it picks out. Um, it can visualize people, it can visualize cars, bikes, the lane markings. If I didn't have the blue Autopilot lane markings on here, uh, then you see actually a dashed line in the center or in this example now, it would have changed to a solid white line. So it really is good at visualizing everything. And you'll see as we're driving around, there'll be elements where it will visualize wheelie bins, it will tell you the traffic lights. We've got some traffic lights coming up in a second. You'll see them and it even shows you the color that's on the screen as well. So just to clarify, when the blue lines are engaged on the screen, that means Tesla Autopilot is engaged and it's driving us. When they're not colored and they're gray, then that means that the car's not driving itself and I'm controlling it. Now, although my hands are on the steering wheel and it looks like I'm steering, that's just because if you don't have your hands on the steering wheel, Tesla Autopilot will disengage after a certain amount of time. So I need to have that on there. But believe me, I'm not controlling anything. I'm not putting the brakes on. It's just doing everything for us here. This is a straight bit of road, pretty dull. I'll let you know when we get a bit nearer into town and we can give it a bit bigger of a challenge. Okay, so we're just coming into the town centre now and we've got Tesla Autopilot engaged. So 
considering that it's built for driving on dual carriageways and motorways, you're not really meant to use it on single carriageways and in cities. You can get full self-driving, which is an additional package where it's gonna be able to drive on city streets soon, Tesla have said, but this was meant to be in 2019 and it's still not materialized. So we'll see what happens then. So autopilot isn't really meant for this. And when it first came to the UK, you see those cars on the left-hand side? It would have stopped behind those because in America, they're not used to cars just parking on the side of the road. But in the year I've had it, it's learned that in the UK we do that and actually adapted accordingly. So it has improved and can deal with situations which it shouldn't really be able to deal with because you're not expecting parked cars on dual carriageways. So I just put too much of an input then through the steering wheel and that's why it disengaged then. Now, if we had no vehicles in front of us at all, it would sail on through all these traffic lights and it wouldn't stop. There is an update we're expecting very soon where it will start to respond to traffic lights, which would be really good. Just a second, let's just have a look at that visualization because it is awesome, isn't it? Look at that, it's picking up around the car. You've got a wheelie bin on your left. You've got all the cars 360. It sometimes is, yeah, it just picked out the person there. I'll try and find a better example where you can see a person. But this is the car. This is there, That was the car just drove us straight through that junction there guided us through perfectly, controlled all the speed. As I said, if there was no cars in front of us, then we wouldn't have been able to do that because it's using the cars as a bit of judgment. Now we've got a bus lane coming up after this section and it'll be interesting to see how this um, deals with it. I was just adjusting there as well the distance behind the car. So on a dual carriageway, I generally have it a little bit further. So like a seven setting, because it follows a bit further behind. And you control that just by using the buttons on the steering wheel and you knock them left or right, depending on the distance. So we've got this bus lane coming up now. Hopefully it will guide me around it. I'm just going to indicate because there's a car behind me and I'm hoping that it will steer us around and we'll go out. Yeah, there we go, perfect. So that was good, it kept me out of the bus lane, stopped me getting a ticket, which is spot on really. So this is it, this, this car has driven us from the top of that road all the way on autopilot, it's kept us in lane. Admittedly, I've not had to make any lane changes here, so that's been an um, advantage because it wouldn't have really changed lanes. And I sometimes find that it tends to prefer the right-hand lane, and I don't know whether that's because it's built from an American kind of system where it obviously would want to stick to the right-hand side. Now, this is a sharp corner coming up. It probably won't make it, and I might have to take over. No, not. Yeah, it managed to engage. So in the UK um, and Europe, we're limited on how much of a corner the autopilot can take. Hopefully that will get removed at some point because it's capable of doing it, it's just EU regulations. Okay, we're just coming up to this junction here and this is normally a good spot to show you all the visualizations. So you can see it's picking up the cyclists going across the road, the people walking across the road, it shows you what direction they're traveling in. And this just gives you faith that the autopilot kind of knows what's going on around its surroundings. Got this person crossing in front of us here. Um, even that traffic light at the top left hand corner there, I can't really see that from where I'm sat, but it's picking up A, that there's a traffic light there and even the color. And that's due to its three forward facing cameras and the awesome fields of view that they must have. Got someone else walking across in the direction they're heading as well. So. That's it, let's go out onto the dual carriageway and see what it's like on the roads that it's actually been built for. So we're just coming down the slip road now. The car's actually started indicating. I don't know whether that's because I've got full self-driving package or not. What's important to know from Autopilot, as I'm demonstrating here, is it won't pull out. <laughs> okay, all hell's broken loose. Yeah, so when you've got Autopilot, it doesn't change lanes for you. That's part of the full self-driving package. So just bear that in mind. Now my speed limit is set to 70 max, but because I've got my distance set at seven, it's only gonna follow this car at about 60 mile an hour, whatever speed the car's doing. So it will not deviate lanes here. Really important. Even if I indicate, that won't take us out of lane. Now there's no traffic behind us at all. I'm just gonna show you what happens if I was to fall asleep at the wheel and I deviate out of my lane. So we've got traffic aware cruise control on and you can see it's bouncing me back into my lane. Can you see how the center line's turning blue? And it's not letting me out. That's the car keeping me in my lane there, which is really good driver assist. And now it's trying to wake me up by sending me lots of messages. So we'll just um, re-engage autopilot and we'll carry on. Now, if I was to say actually fall asleep at the wheel, and didn't have any input in my hands, you'll see then it just gave me a bit of a message up. But what I'll do, I'm not actually touching the steering wheel now. And over time, the car will start to try and alert me and re-engage me with the driving process. 
So initially it will start just flashing blue in a second, no doubt. Here we go, it's telling me to hold the steering wheel and now it's starting to flash blue. That flashing will get quicker and quicker and it kind of just keeps escalating the messages that it sends to you. It takes about a minute before it actually stops you. So you can see it's going more and more and then in a second it will start going really crazy and flashing red at me. But it's quite scary how long you could go asleep at the moment. I might have to intervene. No, there you go. I'm going to take over here because I don't want it to go crazy. But there you go. Now, what's interesting here is once I've done that and I've ignored all the warnings, it punishes me because I will not be allowed to re-engage autopilot now. So if I give it a go and actually try and engage autopilot, you see there's no gray steering wheel at the moment that's telling me that I can't. And if I double click down, it will again send me a message saying, no, you've been naughty, you ignored it, so we're not letting you use it again. And I'll actually have to pull over, get out the car, close the door, and before I can restart it. Now, motorway driving is very similar to dual carriageway driving. You'll see all the cones again on the visualizations. I just love that. So I don't know whether it'll indicate for me to come out, but I'll just overtake that anyway. Um, and then we'll engage autopilot. Now what it tends to do in roadworks, and I don't know whether it's because I have full self-driving package or not, but it doesn't like running near cones and will always try and move you out. There you go, so it's just turned on the indicator. It always tries and steers you and gives you a lanes gap between the roadworks and uh, where it drives. So if you ever get those notifications when you're autopilot, that's what it's trying to do. It's trying to keep you away from the roadworks, which is quite cool. You can see this lorry's just pulling in front of me now. This is a really good example of the speed awareness. So this is actually a 60 mile an hour zone because of the roadworks at the moment. But you can see top right hand corner, the car thinks it's 70 mile an hour. So I've had to manually choose that down to 60. Now you think if it can recognize the difference between lorries, cars, vans, traffic cones, traffic lights, it could read traffic signs. Well, unfortunately that's because of dispute over the patent issues over the traffic sign recognition that I believe Elon Musk fell out with Mobii who have that patent and they didn't therefore um, agree on any terms. Tesla are working on a fix to it and that that will be shown in the future. But at the moment, because the patent involves a camera recognizing a sign, Tesla haven't been able to come up with a workaround. Therefore your car can't read the traffic signs and it has to use the GPS data. But you can see on motorways, no different to dual carriageways, it just keeps you in lane, keeps your speed nice, consistent, and a nice distance behind the lorries and the cars, which is really good and really relaxing for long journeys as well. So we're now on a single carriageway, which is not what Tesla Autopilot is built for, but I'll just show you how it works on it. So we're in a 40, just further up here, it's gonna move over to a 60. Now the sign on the top right hand corner will tell us we've moved into a 60 zone, but you'll see the maximum speed limit doesn't change. So I just have to tap on there, and then that will bring my speed up. Now I could manually do it on the sticks as well, uh, on the buttons on the control on the steering wheel, but that's just a quick, easy workaround if you can't be bothered to scroll on the wheel as well. Now, it does adjust its speed depending on the road. Probably going a little bit quicker than I'd normally go down here, so I can just adjust the speed, especially as we're coming into the 40 on the scroll wheel on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. And then as you drop into the 40, it will automatically drop the speed down. So it won't change it up, but it will change it down depending on the speed limit. The problem I do have with it, even though it knows it's coming up because of GPS, it doesn't slow you down in advance. So you, if you went from a 60 into a 40, you'd be going into that 40 zone at 60 mile an hour and it will take a little while to slow down. Reason why I wanted to come through this section is because it's very windy and these bends shouldn't be taken at 40 mile an hour. And you'll see, I think on this bend, it starts to slow down because it's so sharp. So even if we didn't have, you can see that's breaking there, it's because I put too much pressure on the steering wheel. But this is a good example anyway, because even though I've not got autopilot engaged, can you see how it's slowing my speed down depending on how sharp the bend is? So it should really be going 40 mile an hour there. Normal cruise controls would be sending you around these bends at 40 mile an hour. So it's really good, even with just the cruise control, it's gonna slow you down if it sees sharp bends, sharp bends coming up. This is another sharp bend coming up and we actually move over to 60. So once we get over here, I'll put the maximum speed up to 60, but you'll see that I, the car's not accelerating because it knows there's a sharp bend coming up. And as we get around this bend, I'm expecting to feel some acceleration. Yeah, it's seen the straight, and now we're gonna accelerate down here all the way. So 
even if you don't have autopilot or you don't fancy the full self or the full steering with autopilot engaged, you could just put it on traffic aware cruise control and it's gonna slow you down and accelerate you. So again, you, you don't have to pay as much focus because I don't feel some bends I wanna trust autopilot to steer me around on because it just takes a little while. So I've got a sharp bend coming up here on the right I will let it drive around and you see it's braking for it already. This is all the autopilot doing this. And I don't tend to like using it if there's oncoming traffic and I'm going around a bend where if it didn't respond it would go out because otherwise I just feel that they're, they're a bit scared. So again, sharp bend coming up. I'm expecting it to brake and it does as we come up to the hill. Maybe drifting out a little wide there. I'd have preferred it to keep me in the center and I'm gonna bring my speed down because I know I'm coming into a 30 in a second and it would fly me into this at uh, full speed. So I thought I'd just show you autopilot on this stretch of road because it's very undulating. It's a 60 mile an hour speed limit and it's got some sharp bends as well. And I think this is the best example of what I think of autopilot at the moment for when it comes to non-dual carriageways and non-motorways. It's like a learner driver. So the car's controlling my speed around here and you can see we've dropped down to 34 mile an hour. That just felt like an underconfident learner driver taking a bend, didn't know how to do it. And it's really awkward if you've got traffic behind you as well. We're going 30 up this hill and it could be going a lot quicker. And then it seems like, ah, oh, open road, brilliant, let's floor it. And then it starts to go way too quick. So it goes overconfident learner driver style. And I'm just gonna take this off because this is going too quick for my liking. So yeah, that's a kind of good example of how it doesn't quite get the speed adjustments right yet, but it's a quick learner and I'm sure it'll improve in the future. So I'll just show you what autopilot is like on country roads. As long as you've got a white line in the middle of the road, then it will give the option to engage autopilot, but you don't need that white line to stay there for autopilot to stay on because it will actually keep you to the left-hand side. So it kind of needs the white line to figure out where the middle of the road is, then it must judge where the outer aspect of the road is and then will keep you on the left hand side. So this is the autopilot driving us the whole way here. Uh, I'm gonna keep the speed down because the problem is it would try and drive this road at 60 mile an hour and sometimes it gets a little bit near the verge for my liking so I don't tend to use it too much on country roads. But it just proves that it could manage it um, and I don't want it to scratch my paintwork here. I get very nervous on country roads using it because it's just not that reliable. But yeah, so it can be used on country roads. I'll disengage it now because we're coming up to a junction. So that's it. That's Tesla Autopilot. It's pretty good, isn't it? Considering it's designed for dual carriageways and motorways, it can handle itself on a lot of different road types. And it's free, so it's not even going to cost you anything. So you can kind of use it if you like or not. So if you have liked that, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe because I publish videos weekly. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.